Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula. First up, heart health. February is American Heart Month, a time to remember heart disease is responsible for the most deaths each year in the United States. But how well do people understand it? The Cleveland Clinic released a survey this week that gauged our knowledge of heart health. When it came to numbers we know off the top of our heads, our weight and our bank account balance led the way, <laughs> but under 40% of 1,000 people surveyed knew their blood pressure or their waist circumference, which can be key metrics in heart health. I understand why you weather, why you forget your waist circumference. <laughs> I'd prefer to forget mine. But, but let, well, let's talk about cholesterol levels here, because understanding cholesterol, cholesterol levels can be very complicated with HDL and LDL. Do, do people actually, do they understand it? No, they no. don't. <laughs> no, um, they say, I need my cholesterol checked, and they don't really know what the normal number is or right. what we talk about when we say HDL, LDL, triglycerides. Yeah. So in this survey, they found that only 25% knew that HDL is right. the good cholesterol, the protective one. Right. Only 52% knew that LDL is the bad cholesterol cholesterol, one that we worry a lot about that raises your cardiovascular risk. Uh, most Americans think that triglycerides are the same as cholesterol, which they are not. They are a form of circulating fat in the blood. Mm. And only 12% knew that you should start having your cholesterol checked around the ages of 18 to 24. Interesting. John, we know that supplements are used to combat or ameliorate heart health problems. Yeah, a lot of people are increasingly using these, and the survey found that two-thirds of the people who were surveyed used one or more of these supplements to try to improve their heart health, and yet the American Heart Association says, you know, really try to get all your nutrients from real food, and I spoke to Dr. Steve Nissen, who's the head of cardiovascular medicine for the Cleveland Clinic. He said there's really no good evidence mm. that it does help your heart health and, mm. and you know it's a very typical thing we want to just pop some pills it's a lot easier than doing <laughs> exercise eating right yes. losing weight all that stuff on to the next topic our eating habits continuing with the theme of heart health a statement was released this week by the american heart association regarding meal timing and frequency its impact on preventing heart disease and why skipping breakfast may not be the way to go so Dr. Narula, it, it, breakfast is, we're told, is the most Im important meal of the day. How true is that? Yes, so my mom told me that. I tell my kids, and I know some people, Dr. John LaPook, who do not eat breakfast. Oh! oh. <laughs> 20 to 30 percent of Americans skip it, but in fact, it is very important. This uh, research statement, this scientific statement, basically said that breakfast uh, eaters tend to have lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, better blood sugar, mm. lower weight, and lower cardiovascular events. Um, the thinking is that maybe by starting your morning eating breakfast, you're setting a pattern of healthy habits of eating throughout the rest of the day. You are getting in some needed nutrients like calcium and fiber. And also it's kind of training or helping your body better utilize blood sugar. So, John, I mean, what should we keep in mind then about meal times and meal amounts? Well, I, I love the research in, the, in this review article, really. And they t one of the things that was so interesting was uh, defining what a snack is and what a meal is. Just because you call it a snack doesn't mean it's not a meal, you know? So, so you may be having uh -oh. five or six, depending if they say, look, that we're going to... ice cream isn't a snack? No, they're <laughs> and actually they define it. They say if it's more than 15% of the... One five, 15% of the calories of the day, it's a, it's a meal, meal. Okay. not a snack. Okay. But generally, the general idea is, you know, try to distribute the calories throughout the day, uh, try to avoid eating late. And then again, as, as Tara was saying, this evidence about eating breakfast, you know, maybe actually have some scientific basis to it. All right. It's all very upsetting news, all right. <laughs> Finally today, we're introducing a new segment to Morning Rounds that'll air the first week of every month. Practical advice will focus on the health topics everyone deals with. And the first up is emergency room visits. All right, these are very disturbing usually because you're usually in a state of crisis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> emergency. Yeah, emergency. And, and the last time I was in the emergency room, the guy in the next bed had it was it was a gunshot victim. So that adds to the can add to the drama. <laughs> but anyway, so so but so how do you how do you approach an emergency room visit? You want to try to keep your wits about you, yeah. but mm -hmm. you definitely want to bring certain information into the ER with you. First of all, a list of your medications and not just the name Names, but the doses that you take so that if an ER doctor wants to give you something else, you know if it will interact with what you're taking. A list of your allergies uh, and also a list of your doctors, not just your primary care, but your specialists and their phone numbers so that they can be contacted by the ER. Right. And then in addition to that, I have this idea of a health emergency buddy. Yeah. So have somebody out there, preferably somebody who knows about computers, who has a document with all of this information that Tara told you about. I mean, what if you're on the beach and you get knocked down, you're on the way to the emergency room? Usually you're going to have access to a phone. 
You call that buddy, and that buddy can one way or the other, email, fax, carrier pigeon, get that information to the emergency room. It's also nice to have a buddy come with you to the emergency yeah. room because yeah. you are scared, you're in pain, the yeah. information is going in one ear and out the other. So. And low tech, have a pencil and a, and a pad, write things down, and when you leave the emergency room, make sure you get instructions. Yes, and make sure you get a copy of all of the labs that they did and the testing that you did. I have people come to my office and they say, this is my discharge paperwork and has one diagnosis on it and nothing else. And they yeah. say, but I got a chest x-ray and I had labs done. Ask for those results. Try to get your doctor working on it from the outside if you have one. Yeah. From outside, inside, you have the person, your buddy, person coming to you to the hospital. Yeah. They're there with you. And then at the same time, your doctor can call the emergency room and talk to the doctor there. And you want to make sure you have a follow-up plan too because the ER is just supposed to be in and Good. out. So lots of times people for instance might go in with chest pain and they'll tell them well you didn't have a heart attack but you need to follow up and have yes. a stress test or something else. So you definitely it's want to It's not over when you leave. It yes. is not over. It ain't over till it's over. Doctors John LaPook and Tara Narula, thanks for your time.